I was absolutely enchanted to get this set of four Hogarth engravings, black and white engravings. To stay up to date with recent acquisitions, tips about caring for your cherished pieces and free antiques fairs invitations, why not subscribe to our newsletter using the link below. These date from the middle of the 18th century and it was inspired by the notorious Oxfordshire contest in the general election of 1754. The seats had been held uncontested by the Tories since 1710. Then in 1752 the Whigs, who already held a large majority in Parliament, decided to contest the Oxfordshire seats and this heralded a two-year campaign characterised by unprecedented levels of bribery and corruption. These prints are based on the four paintings Hogarth started not long after the general election. By this time, the events in Oxfordshire had been widely publicised through journals and pamphlets. The paintings were bought from Hogarth by the actor David Garrick, after whom the Garrick Theatre was named, and later acquired by John Soane at an auction of the effects of Mrs Garrick in 1823. The Gentleman's Magazine had been critical of Hogarth's work, calling it the very many disgusting, if not depraved, exhibitions of human nature in the paintings. Fortunately, Soan instead recognised them as the finest of Hogarth's satirical works. The first of the four plates, and they all date from about 1758, is called an election entertainment. And at the left of the first candidate, it's a commodity taxum, receives the confidence of a fat woman, a shoemaker pushes their heads closer together and turns his pipe out over the head of a knight while a young girl admires his ring. In the next group, a chimney sweep takes a similar opportunity to score off his social superior by squeezing painfully the hand of the second candidate in an affected demonstration of friendship and loyalty. A glutinous clergyman acts as the division between these groups and the two succeeding ones in which the gentry are successfully amusing their social inferiors. At the other end of the table, the mayor is being bled by a surgeon after a surfeit of oysters. In front of the table, a peddler who has bought ribbons and knickknacks for sale as gifts looks with misgivings at a promissory note in lieu of cash. A butcher pours gin into the wound of a ruffian hired as a bodyguard, and the election agent is knocked down by a brick hurled through the window. Notice that the bodyguard is receiving gin both internally and externally. Before the door, a Methodist refuses to accept a bribe, while his infuriated wife points to the ragged condition of their son. The inscriptions, slogans, etc. refer to the rival policies of the Whigs and Tories. The scene is an illustration of the text, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish shall betray me, and contains motives from the Last Supper of Leonardo da Vinci, although the composition is a parody of Baroque banquet scenes. The second of the four is entitled Canvassing for Votes. The inn at the left is the portobello representing the floating vote. What you have is the iconic reference to the judgment of Hercules between vice and virtue, which is Tory and Whig. The sly farmer in the centre is in the happy position of being offered bribes simultaneously by two innkeepers whose services have been retained as local agents. A barber and a cobbler argue about the quarrelsome Admiral Vernon, who had brilliantly captured Portobello with six ships of the line but failed disastrously to take Cartagena. The inn on the right is the Royal Oak, the tree in which Charles II hid after the Battle of Worcester. Being a Tory inn, it displays a showcloth satirising Whig Dukes of Newcastle as punch candidate for Guzzledown, shoveling out bribes. The view of the horse guards by Hogarth's bête noire William Kent shows an arch so low that the coachman's head has been knocked off. The Tory candidate buys trinkets from a Jewish peddler to secure the local influence of the two beauties on the balcony. The hostess counts her profits in a chair contemptuously made out of the British lion, who has lost some of his teeth but nevertheless devours the French fleur de lis. A soldier of the English guards displays a keen interest divided between her purse and her person. In the distance in the Crown Inn, belonging to the innkeeper on the left, a disloyal crowd assaults it beneath a signpost which is being sawn down by a fanatic completely unaware that he is bringing about his own destruction as well as theirs. The third plate is entitled The Polling 
and this is where both parties have rallied every possible voter, even the disabled, the lunatic and dying, and criminals temporarily released from jail. The two candidates are seated at the back of the booth with a sleeping beadle between them. The lawyers of the opposing parties argue over the oath of the old soldier who takes it with his hook instead of his right hand, the first declaring that it is invalid, the second protesting against so scandalous an injustice to a patriot wounded in the service of his country. In the background, Britannia's coach is about to be overturned while her coachman and footman play cards. The fourth and final one of the four engravings is entitled Chairing the Members. The two victorious candidates are shown in triumphal procession, the shadow of the second being seen on the wall. The central group is based on the Sacra Conversazione of the Venetians and Rubens, the first member of Parliament occupying the place of the Madonna on her throne. In accordance with Hogarth's theory of comic form and inversion of ideas, a zigzag pattern substitutes the serpentine line of the Baroque, Bearers take the place of the attendant saints and a fiddler leads the procession in lieu of angels playing music. The dominant theme of the various episodes is imminent disaster. The bear leader is responsible for two. By fighting with a countryman armed with a flail, he precipitates the rush of the sow, who has already overturned a woman and her litter of pigs into the stream. His neglected bear, prying into the pannier of the ragged man on a donkey, causes the gun on the monkey's back to be discharged in the direction of a chimney sweep. A young lady behind the wall faints with alarm on seeing the danger of the member to whom she is related. The defeated Whigs jeer at the procession from the house of a lawyer who alone prospers from their humiliations. The house next to his is in ruins. The famous Whig politician and humorist George Bub Doddington, later Baron Malcolm, was the model for the elected member. About his head flies a goose in parody of the eagle flying over the head of Alexander the Great in Pietro di Cortona's Battle of Arbella. Thank you for watching this masterclass. You can subscribe to our channel by pressing the notification bell below. I look forward to seeing you again very soon.